On Saturday, Kaylee and Maddie were seen at the Corner Club on Main Street between 10 p.m. and 1.30 a.m. Ethan and Zana were at a Sigma Chi party near the home between 8 and 9 p.m. Now on Sunday, so after leaving the Corner Club, Kaylee and Maddie were at Grub Truck at 1.40 a.m., which we have video of, and Etha and Zana and Kaylee and Maddie, so all four of them, they were all back to the house at 1.45 a.m. So that is what we know about the timeline right now. It wasn't until noon that same day when officers responded to a 911 call about an unconscious person. When they got to the house off King and Queen Road near U of I's campus, they found the four students dead. Fry said, or Moscow Police Chief James Fry said there was no sign of forced entry. He also said two roommates were home when it happened, but didn't go so far as to call them witnesses and says they were not hurt. Now, investigators, like I mentioned before with the forensics team, they are still collecting evidence at the scene. Just to reiterate, they don't have a suspect or suspects at this time or a description. Fry maintained that this is an isolated attack. But he says he cannot say there is no threat to the community, so they're asking people to stay vigilant, be careful, and they're all. We turn to former FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffindoffer. Always appreciate your insight. Thank you for being here, Jennifer. Absolutely, Natasha. So, according to reports, uh, one of the victims, Kaylee, spoke about having a stalker. Jennifer, what do you make of this? Well, it's going to be a very important uh, key in this from the standpoint that that person needs to be looked into immediately. And I have no doubt that uh, law enforcement has already possibly identified that who that is and is on the track to try to figure out if they had a role in all of this. And Kaylee also made seven phone calls back to back to her ex-boyfriend, Jack, according to her sister. Those calls went unanswered, but how can that information help the investigation? Well, any and all phone calls, text messages, social media avenues in terms of communication that happened just prior to that event and well in advance of this event are going to be looked at closely. Look, this has to be somebody that is familiar with them. And in my opinion, they were looking at someone specific to go after. Sadly, it would seem that he came across other people perhaps going bed to bed until he found the person that his rage uh, left all of these individuals um, deceased, sadly. Right, and, and we know there are two other people unharmed. Also a dog present at that scene. I, I've seen some, some speculation online talking about why could it be that the dog wouldn't alert the, the sleeping people uh, in that household as to, as to what was going on there. Is that just wild speculation or, or could there be a piece to that person being known uh, within that space? Well, I think that person is possibly familiar. We know that there was no break in. They seem to be familiar. Uh, but to say the dog didn't wake the other two individuals, this is three and four in the morning when people are fast and hard asleep. And uh, apparently, from what I understand, behind closed doors. So uh, even if the dog barked, perhaps they thought they were barking at something else. What is clear is they did not come to inspect what had happened until quite later. Appreciate that. And can you talk more about the significance of the uh, large knife? I, I know Ryan was mentioning this. A county coroner told News Nation that somebody had to be pretty angry in order to stab four people to death. What can we glean from that being the murder weapon, the knife being the murder weapon, and also the amount of blood that that engenders? What does that mean for potential footprints in that area, even the attacker leaving their own DNA behind? Well, the beautiful thing in terms of an investigation that this type of, of horrible act leaves behind what we call trace evidence. That trace evidence can be hair, can be fibers, can be carpet. Uh, it can be all of, of many things. And I totally agree that to have this kind of attack happen, it is likely that they would have stabbed themselves in some way, a small way, cuts and so on. We also know that there was blood splatter and all of that is so significant and it's going to take quite an investigation to pour through that crime scene. I mean, even as we're talking about this, it's hard to stomach the details and to imagine how violent this was. Uh, it does seem that there are so many holes investigators need to fill still. We are seven days out. How much harder is it to solve a murder like this as time continues to pass? It's harder, but they're going to solve this. But the biggest thing they need to find out is who was actually being targeted of the four. 
you would think that there was one person being targeted and that the other three were there uh, and were incidental to the person's rage that they had, because this is a homicidal, passionate rage that they had toward one of those four. All right, former FBI Special Agent Jennifer Koffendoffer, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Natasha. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.